Howdy folks. Well, sometimes procrastination can be a bad thing. Recently had that pointed out by Paul Hampton. He said, oh, I see, now that you've got a warm spell, you're probably going to go back to fishing or some such and not do your stove and get it ready, right? Well, yeah, I kind of did, except it wasn't fishing. It was getting more stuff done outside while the, while the getting was good, as they say. But as you can see by those numbers, you know, 48 degrees is just a little too chilly for an old fella anymore. I'm not as cold tolerant as I used to be. And that top number is actually closer to 32. I had the sending unit in here for a couple days because I put new batteries in it. So it was, it was actually reading the same as the indoor one, which is the bottom set of numbers, uh, until just a little bit ago when I put it back in its spot. So, having said all that, it's time to introduce you to my friend Vigo. Alrighty folks, this is Vigo the Wonder Double Barrel Stove. And I've taken the liberty of removing Vigo's cap on his top barrel to save time and to give you a peek inside. You can see that layer of stuff. I'll move in closer here right just now. Alrighty, so this is the top barrel. This is my hand to give you an idea how thick this stuff is. And, you know, when we moved up here, I hadn't had a lot of experience with wood stoves, to be honest. Didn't have them growing up. And the first time I cleaned this, I about freaked because I thought, oh my gosh, look at all that creosote. Well, it turns out that that's not really creosote or creosote, um, at least not a bad kind of it. I've actually, I've shown pictures of this to people and they said, oh, that amount, I wouldn't even have bothered cleaning it. So, oh, and these were actually wood stove people that sell and install wood stoves, not just some smuck on the street, but... I've actually taken a, uh, my map gas torch and tried to light some of those shiny crispy pieces off and they won't burn. So the stuff you worry about is the tarry, gooey, slightly, well it's very sticky stuff. That's the stuff you've got to worry about. That's the stuff that I guess ignite and run and drip and flaming napalm like things and burn through your chimney pipe or your stove pipe. So, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to show this, and the reason I think this double barrel stove is so handy, is that now I can run my chimney. I mean, I can take my brush from inside here and run it all the way up to the cap, make sure my, my, uh, my pipe is clean, and I can do that in January and February when there's four feet of snow on the ground, and it's 20 below zero. So, if you're thinking about doing one of these, I would highly advise this design, although I didn't say that because you do your own due diligence, etc, etc, CYA. Alrighty peeps, I, I took a couple of scoops full out of there and I wanted to show you that you can see that basically underneath this crispy stuff on top, the really dark stuff, it's basically just a lot of fly ash. So no worries there. Uh, Normally, in the spring, the other reason I pulled, the, pulled the, the face off the barrel first was normally in the spring, after the fires have dropped, I go up on the roof and I, put a, I have a uh, bucket, a yellow bucket with a smiley face painted on it and some bricks, and I take the cap off and bring it down, give it a good cleaning and put that bucket in place because we've had trouble in the past with birds flying in here and dying, which just makes me sick. Uh, the reason I didn't do it this spring was because my spotter already had a broken leg and, you know, her job is not to catch me if I fall off the roof, it's to be there to call 911 to get an ambulance out here. And I just, I kind of decided that one broken leg in the family that year was enough, so I'm, I was grateful to see that nobody had uh, flown in here. Alright peeps, you can see we got her all shoveled and vacuumed out uh, in pretty good shape. Got everything, everything that comes off easily. I don't spend a lot of time on it because frankly that stuff's good steel preservative. But anyway, I'm going to back this off and show you uh, show you why this design is so slick if you like to be able to clean your chimney more than 
Well, if you like to be able to clean your chimney without having to get on the roof, let's put it that way. Hi, peeps. So now, hello. Dust mask for safety. Uh, before I go, before I show you how slick this works, and I'm not going to show the whole process, it's uh, time to talk a little safety about these rods. These are fiberglass, and the joints on these are not great. It's a very coarse thread. Um, as you're doing this, it's a really good idea to make sure your joints stay tight. My neighbor borrowed these and didn't and ended up having to have some guys come out and fish out part of this one of the rods in my brush because it became un, it unscrewed itself basically. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing, very advisable not to slide these through your hands as you're doing this. Grip and then move and grip. This is fiberglass and it's not made like a high dollar fishing rod. The fibers will, you can see this part's kind of rough. The little fibers will stick up. And folks, let me tell you, trust me on this. You do not want one of those going into your palm or your finger or something because a, a puncture wound hurts really bad. This stuff hurts worse than that. So just FYI and, and you know, be, be cautious because it is painful. And I'm sure that's probably really noisy, but... Now I've got to add another section of rod and I'm going to cut this off, but... <coughs> that gives you an idea. You'd much rather be in your shop uh, doing this in January and February than you would outside on the roof, which is probably icy and slippery. So, again, I think this is a good idea. Use your own caution. Well, peeps, I couldn't find a Coke can for a size reference, but you can see by my hand, there's, I don't know, that might be a couple, three inches tall, little pile, a little, not very big. Um, again, I've shown that to people and they're like, oh, that you wouldn't even bother cleaning it that much. So, uh, let me get this buttoned up and I'll show you some other features on this puppy. All right, stove peeps. This is the heart of the beast, so to speak, and this is what makes this one a little bit unique. Um, and unfortunately, I don't remember if this was, an, was a me thing or I saw it on a YouTube video. I do have a folder from when I was looking into this and I couldn't find anybody on that or in that folder that had done this exact thing. If you did and I watched you, I apologize. Please let me know in the comments. But <clears throat> So, one of the issues with these stoves is that people just, they don't do this. And I'll tell you what this is in a second. Well, after about a year or so of those hot coals sitting on the on the very bottom of the barrel, they burn out. I mean, I've literally heard stories where guys lit a fire and looked over in a while and there were hot embers sifting through the weakened and now broken sheet metal or, or uh, yeah, sheet metal that these things are made out of. <coughs> Excuse me. What I've done, this is a piece of, actually it's an old piece of fuel oil tank and I've cut it to fit, bolted it in place. Behind this is a, I believe it was either a 40 or 50 pound bag of play sand. Nice, clean, dry play sand. On top of that, I have placed fire bricks that you would use in a normal wood stove. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sorry for the abrupt movement there, and this flashlight isn't great, but hopefully you can see through the glare that over time those fire bricks they don't last forever you can see the I've got some and these are all the ones on the side are just dry stacked and it's just a way to protect the metal more uh, and make the stove last longer this will be the fifth year we burned this stove so those fire bricks lasted four years which that ain't bad folks um, I've got a few cracked ones on the side here I'm going to replace and then I have to do all 
all nine of those and then the three along the back so it gets me a little more height up there up top and on the on the back side to protect this but again you know I'm not gonna claim that I came up with this all by myself but I can't find who may have already done the video or whose video I watched so I guess I'm gonna sort of take credit for it but again <clears throat> my plan was and this is where the procrastination thing got me I was going to pull all the sand out and inspect the metal underneath but <clears throat> given the time constraints and, and oopsies and stuff happened I'm just gonna go ahead and replace those bricks and I kind of tunked along the bottom with a little ball peen hammer and it still it feels just as sound as when I installed it so alright folks well we've got 9, 10, 11, 12 new fire bricks on the base here. This and then the back wall. And I apologize because that kind of washes the video out. But I don't have a lot of choice. And I ended up, the one in the middle on this bottom row here, I ended up, it had a crack. So I put a new one in that. Well, this one up top looks new. But actually it's just one of the ones from the base here that was in good shape on the back side. So I did that with a couple of those. The other side here didn't have any issues and again I don't know how well that will show up I'm trying to kind of washes it out but you can see the back corners I basically along the those back corners and along the edges there was enough of a gap well I just took some of the fireplace ash or wood stove you know the, the stove ash here and I went ahead and uh, fill those in to give it a little ex in extra insulation. Uh, as the season progresses, when I shovel, I shovel to the back. Well, I don't usually shovel it all the way. So in not too long period of time, there'll be a nice bank of uh, ash on that back wall and in those back corners to, like I said, further insulate. Um, so we're real close to getting a fire going. Let me get the uh, lid on here and we'll get some we'll get some flames. That little dew jabber is a is a real comfort too. That's actually got a sending unit, and there that's the this is the master unit. You can see the temps going up pretty fast. There's an uh, almost identical unit in the house that displays the temperature out here, and we can set this for an alarm if it goes over or under. Although we just have ours set for over for obvious reasons. If it goes over a certain temperature, it'll set off an alarm in the house. So, makes the insurance guy feel better too. Couple more quick things on this stove. And again, don't follow my advice because I'm crazy sometimes. But if you want to, due diligence. This is supposed to be the damper or air inlet for the stove. Uh, the thing's a joke. It's it's kind of loose. In fact, those are computer or those are hard drive, uh, magnets out of computer hard drives to just absolutely seal that shut as best as possible because, again, this thing is just it's too loose to be effective to seal air. I mean, obviously it helps, but it's it, this is not a great design. Uh, I believe they do make a version of this stove um, that's supposed to be more airtight. But I've never laid eyes on one or hands on one, so I'm not going to be able to advise you on that. Now, moving down, this was one of the ideas I got from Mr. Wrangler Star, which he took a pipe nipple, came out, I don't know, his was like a three or four incher, and then he put a little flapper arm on that with a little thing to cover the end of the pipe nipple, and that was his damper control. Well, <clears throat> My original idea, and I may still do it at some point, 
This is actually, this was kind of an indulgence. That was a $60 ball valve. But I'll be real honest with you, you can fine tune the stove very nicely with that. Chalk it right down to nothing or, you know, full blast. Eventually, I may add on to that and down and go out the back wall with the tube and bring my air in from outside. The reason for that is right now that the end of that thing right here is sucking a whole bunch of air out of the shop and sending it up the chimney. Well, that creates a bit of a vacuum. If you have any leaks in your shop or house, that draws in cold air. And believe me, given I have a large sliding door on the front, which is just a terrible design, but it in ways is better than the overhead doors, you have leaks. So if I could uh, mitigate that, it would probably make the shop a lot warmer. I would, I would stop drawing air in from the outside, which would, again, it would, you know, all that air that's coming in is going to just replenish cold. So, but honestly, I'll show you here in a minute what kind of a temperature rise we got. Even in the worst conditions, I'll come out here and I'll be mid 50s uh, from not having a fire all night long and within an hour hour and a half I'm up to mid 60s or 70 degrees so and I'm really not burning that much wood out here but you know what if I could save a few a few trips this uh, winter by doing some little thing like that I'd do it the only thing is I have to drill a hole in the wall and I'm not really keen on doing that and I would have to figure out a foolproof bulletproof chipmunk proof way to pest control it because otherwise they would use it as a uh, acorn storage device and I just don't want that so alright you can see it's about it's not quite 25 after 8 I believe the other segment I filmed it was 10 minutes of 7 so we're looking at just a little over an hour and a half and drum roll please and hopefully you can see that good we're looking at 57 degrees we were at about 48, 47, 48. So about 10 degrees in a little over an hour, hour and a half. So not horribly, not horribly bad. And uh, considering that everything in here is heavy and metal and was really cold. So it's probably going to take a couple days to get some of the chill out of the, the heavy metal stuff and get some heat back in. But anyway, Paul Hampton, there you go, buddy. Your worries are over, or yeah, your worries can be over. I won't freeze, the rocks won't freeze, and we'll continue bringing you good content, buddy. Thank you for watching, folks.